Tonight at 6 on TV2 News, protests continue in Akron after the grand jury decision on the Yellen Walker case, how the Akron community is feeling. Today is Kent's annual Earth Fest celebration. Find out how Kent State students and faculty celebrated. In Washington, the Biden administration and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy have yet to come to terms on a death ceiling plan. What would happen if there is not an outcome soon? It's time to celebrate these workers on their national day. More on all of these stories and more as TV2 News starts right now. This is TV2 News. Good Tuesday evening, Portage County, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Nuria Tortado. And I'm Josh Aponte. Tonight, we start off with yesterday's grand jury decision in the case of the officers who shot and killed Jalen Walker in Akron last year. Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost announced the decision in a press conference. My office's work and the decision of the grand jury is driven by the law as it is, not as it might be. The grand jury concluded that the officers were legally justified in their use of force. The grand jury just a little while ago issued what is called a no bill, meaning that there will be no state criminal action, no charges at the state level. And following the decision, Akron citizens are protesting today. TV2's Gabby Jonas went downtown Akron and can tell us more on the reaction. Hi, Gabby. Hi, guys. That's right. I visited Akron today where a Justice for Jalen Walker event march was held at the First Congressional Church on East Market Street. The protests come just one day after grand jury decided not to indict eight Akron police officers in the shooting of Jalen Walker last June. So long as we remember and lest we never forget Jalen Walker's name. Today, dozens gathered in downtown Akron to protest Monday's grand jury decision not to indict eight Akron police officers accused of shooting Jalen Walker. Walking free and not in jail after shooting an unarmed man running away 90 times, 46 bullets penetrating his body and not one of those accounted for by a single charge against them. Members of Freedom Block, the NAACP, the Akron Urban League, and Walker's attorney all spoke out at a community conference. Black people, white people, brown people, red people, all people now are dying under this gun culture. That's the thing, that's the notoriety. I'm going to say what I got to say, and we're going to do it no matter what the consequences are. We're not going to leave that job. It's a ethics. It's a I'm going in the streets. I'm going to organize with people who want to organize with me, people who want to fight for the freedom and liberation against evil. Don't think you up against the APD. You up against evil. Don't think you up against the mayor. You up against evil. You're not up against white supremacists. We against evil. Co-executive director for Center of Popular Democracy, Demario Cooper, spoke on how the community needs to move forward. As a community in Akron, Ohio, what we need to address, and we need to ask this question everywhere we go, are we going to have a future together? Are we going to have a future together? Because by not giving us justice, you're saying we can't. And with hope and solidarity from Walker's family, attorney Bobby DiCello demands change. We are going to change the law in the state of Ohio, and we are not going to stop. We are going to get rid of qualified immunity. We are going to make sure that there are dash cams on every police car. We are going to make sure officers are held accountable by civil oversight committees, your committees. For now, all eight officers accused in the fatal shooting remain on administrative duty. The Akron Police Chief Steve Maylett said the department will be conducting an internal review and investigation. So far, no other charges have been filed. Reporting for TV2 News, I'm Gabby Jonas. Continuing with the case, Ohio Representative Amelia Sykes released a statement following the grand jury decision to not press charges against the eight officers involved in the Jalen Walker shooting. 
The statement says that Sykes will formally request an investigation into the practices of the Akron Police Department and to create solutions for the community. Sykes also calls for protests to remain peaceful in Walker's honor and that the community needs to heal together. Good evening, Portage County. I'm Abby Forbes, your Tuesday weather anchor. And the cold weather has returned out there, but maybe not for long. Let's take a closer look at what it's like outside right now. So right now it is 47 degrees outside, but there is a bit of a wind chill uh, with the winds going at 16 miles per hour. So it is going to feel a little bit chillier out there, about 41 degrees as you step outside tonight. Um, with that, there is a little bit of humidity in the air, but it's not too uh, sticky out there today. So looking a little bit closer into tonight and into tomorrow morning, uh, right after the newscast, it will go up a little bit to 48 degrees from 47, but then it will drop again as we get into midnight and into the following morning. Um, however, those clouds that we are seeing out there tonight are going to part ways as we get into tomorrow morning and you'll see some sun, which is going to be a pretty nice change from how it's been today. So looking a little bit closer at tonight, uh, right after the newscast, like I said, it's going to be 48 degrees, so it's going to go up by a degree uh, and that is going to be partly cloudy uh, with a slight wind chill and there is a freeze warning going on right now. So be a little bit careful going out there tonight. Bundle up um, and get ready for that. So that's all I have for right now. But later tonight, we'll be taking a look at the weather for the rest of Ohio and for the rest of the week. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Abby. The Office of Sustainabil Sustainability held Earth Fest today in the Student Center. Many different on and off campus organizations and departments with sustainability purposes were part of this event, as well as food, music, giveaways, and prize drawings. The goal of this event was to increase students' awareness of sustainability and to engage students in educational activities and inspire students' actions in the sustainability movement. Cleveland businessman Bernie Moreno announced Tuesday his intentions to run for an Ohio U.S. Senate seat. Moreno would face Senator Sherrod Brown in the 2024 election, which would make him the second Republican in the race. He ran for the Republican nomination in 2022, but dropped out after a meeting with President Trump. The 2024 election will determine if the Republicans will win back the Senate majority. Northfolk Southern CEO Alan Shaw has embraced some rail safety measures in the wake of the East Palestine train derailment. Shaw said that he supports other parts of the senator's legislation, such as better tank car standards, increased oversight of expectations, and investments in hot bearing detectors. Norfolk Southern and other railroads have res resisted requirements to staff trains with at least two crew members, saying that alone wouldn't prevent accidents. A former Binghamton County fiscal officer used public money to buy personal items. A state audit released today says Sais Biestra spent public money on a kayak, popcorn machine, and a drum set. He also spent more than $4,000 on a wildebeest and almost $5,000 on two snow owls. Sibiestra was sentenced to 59 months in prison after pleading guilty to theft in office, engaging in a pattern of corrupt activity, tampering with records and other charges. The China COVID crisis, how the country is recovering after the, after the pandemic. A house owner in Kansas City could spend the rest of their life in prison after shooting a black teenager last week. What charges is he facing and how the community is reacting? Tomorrow's news leaders. Today's top stories. From an award-winning student newsroom. This is TV2 News, truly Portage County. Welcome back. There are updates on COVID vaccines and a growth in cases in China. That's right. Our correspondent Anthony Leonardi has all the details on these and more on today's top health stories. Hi, Anthony. Thanks, guys. Starting off, let's get into recent developments both in the United States and abroad. The FDA has approved additional doses of bivalent COVID-19 vaccine boosters for certain vulnerable individuals. Bivalent coronavirus vaccines fight both the original strain of the virus as well as Omicron and its spinoffs. 
The FDA amended its emergency use authorizations for the Pfizer and Moderna bivalent vaccines. The changes allow people ages 65 and older and certain people with weakened immunity to get additional doses before this fall's vaccination campaigns. And continuing with COVID-19, China's economy appears to be bouncing back after the government dropped its zero COVID policy. China's National Bureau of Statistics says GDP grew by 4.5% for the first quarter compared with a year ago. That's stronger than analysts were expecting. I went to my gynecologist and said, I have all these symptoms. And, you know, he's like, congratulations, this is menopause. All these things coming at you, it just, you know, made you feel not like a whole person. Millions of women go through menopause every year, and the symptoms can last years, and the quality of a woman's life can be greatly affected. However, many health experts say that treatment can help. In the case of Lori Lane, a blood test revealed that her testosterone was low. She then received a low dose of testosterone via pellet injection under the skin, and the doctor giving these treatments, Terence Pepe, says it's providing relief to many patients. However, this method of treatment is not yet approved by the FDA. For continued updates on health news and more, be sure to visit KentWired.com and follow us at KentWired on social media. For TV2 News, I'm Anthony Leonardi. Welcome back to your Tuesday weather forecast. Now let's take a closer look across Ohio tonight. So looking at northeastern Ohio, you can see that we're kind of in the same region with the low 50s, high 40s, and over in Ashtabula up by the lake, we are at 43. So it's a little colder there because of how close it is to the lake. But other than that, as you go more south, you can see that the temperatures change to 51 and 50. Uh, down in Mansfield, Worcester, Canton, and even over in Sandusky. Looking more across the rest of Ohio, um, we can see the temperatures get a little bit uh, warmer as we get down into Cincinnati at 64. In Athens, we've got it at 60 as well, so still warmer as we go s more south. In the middle of Ohio at Columbus, we'll see it's at 58 and 59 in Dayton, so a little bit warmer as we go more south into Ohio. So looking at our seven day, I promised you some more warm temperatures. So tomorrow it will be getting up to 65 degrees here in Kent uh, with 50 as the low. And we will see more of that sun as it's going to be mostly sunny tomorrow. Uh, Thursday, the high is going to get up to 82, which is a lot warmer, more like the temperatures we were seeing last week. Um, so those are going to come back into play with some clouds rolling in on Thursday and those clouds rolling even more in on Friday as the temperature drops a little bit to 76 as the high. Saturday, we are going to get some rain with those clouds coming in. Um, and as we get into the rest of the week, you're going to see those clouds part a little bit as we get into early next week. But that's all the weather I have for you tonight. I've been Abby Forbes. Have a great evening, Portage County. Major part of drought that died on Thursday. What Ralph went through, like, he lost a part of himself that day. I doubt Ralph is even 170 pounds. Ralph is not even six feet. Like, Ralph, when you see Ralph in all of the pictures that you have seen on social media and everywhere else, I don't see how you see fear. I don't know how you can see fear when you look at that kid. Two felony counts filed after a black teenager was shot and seriously injured in Kansas City. An 84-year-old homeowner shot a black teenager who rang his doorbell last Thursday. Kansas City police say Andrew Lester opened fire on a 16-year-old Ralph Jarl through his glass front door, wing front door, shooting him on his forehead and arm. Lester told investigators he was scared to death by Jarl's size and his inability to defend himself at age 84. If convicted on the assault charge, Lester could spend the rest of his life in prison. Discussions about the U.S. debt ceiling remain grounded. The deadline to present a solution is getting closer, but Republican leaders and the Biden White House are still at odds on the matter. CNN John Lawrence has more details. Republican leaders in the House say the U.S. has more than 31 trillion reasons to tighten the purse strings. Our national debt is too high, far too high. And the problem is getting worse, not better. 
House Speaker Kevin McCarthy previewed a plan that calls for lifting the debt ceiling for one year. It'll contain spending cuts and revenue raisers that he says will limit Washington spending, save taxpayers money, and grow the economy. President Biden has maxed out the nation's credit card. He's done it by re reckless spending. And here we're going to be rolling out a plan to address that problem. The White House blasted House Republicans in a tweet saying they're, quote, holding the economy hostage by using the debt ceiling as a way to trigger spending cuts. I'll be blunt. If Speaker McCarthy continues in this direction, we are headed to default. During an appearance on Fox News Monday, McCarthy wouldn't say if he had enough votes in the narrowly divided chamber to raise the debt limit. Now, while there's no official date as for when the U.S. could possibly default if the debt ceiling isn't boosted, officials say it could happen within months. Republicans should work with Democrats in good faith to avoid default together, just as we did under President Trump. Just as what President Reagan talked about. No blackmail, no brinksmanship, no default. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Southwest Airlines resumed flights after a pause of all of its departures Tuesday morning. The pause was due from an issue with one of the airline's internal systems delaying more than 1,800 flights nationwide. This accounted for 41% of Southwest's Tuesday schedule. Other airlines were not affected in the incident. It's tax day and the IRS has received more than 100 million income tax returns for 2022, which means tens of millions of people have yet to file their returns. Tax filers in most of California have been granted an extension until October 16th due to severe weather. People in the armed force who are currently or were recently in a combat zone, the tax deadline are most likely to be extended by 180 days. If you made little to no money last year, you may not be required to file a return or may be eligible to use IRS free file. Dominion voting systems have settled in a def defamation lawsuit against Fox News that originated back in 2020. The suit initially sought $1.6 billion in damages from airing false claims that Dominion was involved in a scheme to rig the 2020 election. The amount paid in the settlement has not yet been released. Google Maps has a new update that might motivate you to visit national parks around your area. What the new feature is. Kent State women's lacrosse players sweep the weekly conference awards. Find out all about it and more when we return after the break. And now, your TV2 Sports Report. How's it going, Portage County? I'm Michael Neenan, and I'm not going to waste any more of your time because I'm here to talk about sports. Let's get right into it because... This afternoon, two Kent State women's lacrosse players swept the weekly Mid-American Conference awards. Junior attacker Jackie Wolford earned MAC Offensive Player of the Week after totaling 12 goals and 3 assists for 15 points against Eastern Michigan and Robert Morris last week. Also taking home the MAC Defensive Player of the Week award was junior defender Lily Miller, who totaled 4 ground balls and 4 caused turnovers. Wolford and Miller will resume action tomorrow at 7 when the team travels to Akron to take on the Zips. And the Cleveland Cavaliers host the New York Knicks for Game 2 of their first round playoff series. In Game 1, the Knicks defeated the Cavs by a score of 101-97 to take a 1-0 series lead to erase home court advantage for the Cavs. Most notably, New York out-rebounded Cleveland 51-38, which included 17 offensive boards by the Knicks. This comes in spite of the fact that the Cavs start two seven-footers in Jared Allen and Evan Mobley in the front court. The tip-off for Game 2 is set for 7.30. Be sure to catch the game on TNT or Volley Sports Ohio. And the NHL playoffs kicked off last night. Let's take a look at Game 1 of the Wild vs. Stars, because in the first period on a Wild power play, Kirill Kaprizov he tips it in off a shot from Jared Spurgeon to give the Wild a 1-0 lead. And in the second period, off the faceoff, Ropey Hints 
shoots and scores off the Stars power play to tie things up at one apiece. The Stars, they would get another power play. And the 46 goal scorer Jason Robertson gets another one to put the Stars up 2-1. to one. All right, what happens in the third period? Did the Dallas Stars add to their lead? No, they don't. They cough the puck up because Sam Steele on the breakaway, he beats Jake Ottinger and he ties things up at two apiece. It would not only go to one overtime, it would go to two overtimes in this hectic final play. The puck goes in front of the net and Kirill Kaprizov, he capitalizes, giving the Wild a 3-2 victory and the Minnesota Wild take a 1-0 series lead. Well, that's all I have for today. Be sure to follow our socials at TV2KSU Sports for all sports-related updates within the area. I'm Michael Neenan, and let's get back to the news. After the break, how to celebrate a day dedicated to those who keep your power running. Welcome back. Tuesday is National Lineman Appreciation Day. Linemen are the workers who keep our electricity running, and right now they are working tirelessly to return service to areas hit by severe weather these past few days. Even when there is no emergency, linemen work under risky and dangerous conditions. So if you are using your power today, you have a lineman to thank. And just in time for National Park Week, finding your way across the parks across the country should be easier. That's because Google Maps is rolling out new features to help you explore. The company says it updated, its updated app will generally help you navigate your way around the park. You're visiting and assist you in discovering things to do and see. The updated app will also let you download a park map that you can use even without internet access. Google Maps, are you guys big users of Google Maps? I mean, when I, when I have to drive, yeah, but like yeah. usually no, yeah. because I tend to walk, but I don't know. I used it a lot my freshman year here at Kent because I had to no idea where buildings. anything was, anything. <laughs> I get lost way too easily. It's like probably the most used app on my phone. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh yeah, that might be the second most used app on my phone. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I don't get lost easily. Sometimes I just like to, to hear the map play anyway. Hey, yeah. that's, that's fair. That's, that's fair. fair. Well, <laughs> that's all the time we have for you today. Thank you so much for joining us. For updates on all these stories and more, visit KentWired.com. And follow us on social media on all platforms at Kent Wired. I'm Michael Neenan. I'm Abby Forbes. I've been Josh Ponte. And I'm Noria Tortalo. Have a great night, Portage County.